Welcome. This is the Simplicity of the Gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. I'm glad that you're with me today. And I'm happy that you're sharing these 10 minutes broadcast with your friends and your loved ones. And I want to encourage those of you who are receiving them daily but you're not doing anything about them. Don't keep them for yourself. Just use them as part of your evangelistic outreach. And share at least 10 every day. They're not patented or anything. You could just go ahead and share as many. You can share hundreds. And the gospel message will reach so many people. The last two times I was with you, I was speaking to you about God's provision for your healing and deliverance. So many people are sick. So many people are uh, suffering from infirmity and disease. And people are not getting the results from the doctors because some things are not caused by, by physical things at all. Some sicknesses are caused by demonic activity. But God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And so God has given us the wherewithal that you can be saved. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is what the Bible tells us to do. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And in the meanwhile, we lay hands on them. We pray for them. You call for the elders of the church. If you are sick, who would anoint you with oil, lay hands on you. And believe me, you'll be healed in the name of Jesus. But brother, I'm here to tell you today that you have prayed or someone have prayed for you. Maybe for, for, for days, maybe for months, maybe for years. And you have not seen the answer yet. So I'm here to tell you this morning that you have to wait on God. Now, there's some instances in the Bible that we would all like. In Matthew chapter 10, 52, Jesus is healing a blind man. And the Bible said, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Immediately. You know, the Bible says in Luke chapter 1 of verse 64, Concerning a man that was dumb, the Bible said, and his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loose and he spake and praised God. Luke chapter 4 verse 39. This is a young lady. Jesus took over her and rebuked the fever and it left her and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Furthermore, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, it says this, and he, Jesus, put forth his hand and touch him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Notice how many times I'm saying the word immediately. And you're probably getting um, a little under the weather because yours has not happened immediately. Just wait a little bit. Luke chapter 5 verse 25. And immediately the sick man rose up before them and took that upon which he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Immediately that happened. In Matthew 8, uh, verse 3, Jesus put forth his hand and touched this man, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was slain. Brethren, there are things that happen immediately. Sometimes you'll come across the word straight away. In Mark chapter 5, and verse 42, And straight away the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years old, and they were astonished with great astonishment. That happened straight away. So we have the word immediately. We have the word straight away. But you know, this has not happened to you. Listen to Mark 5, 29. The woman with the issue of blood. After she had touched the hem of his garments, the Bible said, And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague immediately sometimes you come across not immediately or straight away but sometimes you come across the word at the same hour and in that same hour Luke 7 21 7 21 in that same hour Jesus cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight that happened to him to them at the same hour so brethren you have been praying and you have not seen the results as yet. Let me tell you something. Look, do you know how long Noah waited before he saw water enough to float the ark? Do you know how long Abraham and his wife Sarah waited before they saw the promise son? Do you know how long um, Mary and Martha waited 
before Jesus came and healed their brother Lazarus? Do you know? Do you know how many years uh, Saul, David, spent in exile, running for his life, even after he was appointed king? Brother, this is not like put like putting hot water to starch. It is not like quick starch. It's not like making popcorn. Sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. And that's why the Bible tells us we should wait on the Lord. Wait. The Bible says in, in Isaiah 40, 31, They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings as eagles. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. We need to wait on the Lord. Psalm 130 verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. Psalm 37 verse 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself. Don't fret yourself. Wait on the Lord. Because you know God has said in Numbers 23 and 19, that God's not a man that he should like if he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 says, This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears. And if we know that he hears, we have the conf we have the petition that we deserve him. Ask and it shall be given for everyone that asketh receiveth. The promises of God are never no. God never says no to a promise that he's made. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yes. Yeah and amen. You have not yet received your healing. You have not yet received that which you want from the Lord. You have not yet received it. And maybe your, your faith is becoming fractured. Maybe you're spiraling downward into unbelief and doubt. No, don't do that. Let me tell you what to do while you wait. Number one, instead of complaining, instead of throwing fits, instead of running away from God, Number one, consider changing your attitude about the truthfulness, the veracity of God. He cannot lie and he cannot fail. Um, the next thing you need to do is keep your trust up while you patiently wait on God. Keep trusting in the Lord. You've got to pursue your faith while patiently waiting on God. Don't let your faith slip. Increase in faith. How do you do that? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So keep in the word of God. Another thing you could do while you wait is that you could serve others patiently while you're waiting. Do you know somebody that has a need? You know somebody that needs a healing? Could you get on your knees and pray for them? Uh, another thing you must do while you're waiting is that you must be watchful, you must be expectant as you patiently wait on God. Just be patient, brethren. God's going to work for you. He's the always God. He knows when, where, how, and why. And he's going to do it for you. Just keep your faith up. Uh, uh, another thing you could do is be grateful while you are patiently waiting for God. While you are patiently waiting on God. Trust. Pursue your faith. Serve others. Be watchful and be expectant. Be grateful while you patiently wait on God. God is going to answer you. He's going to answer his prayer. God said in Psalm 8, 9, 34, I will not alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. Just wait. So you probably think that nothing is happening while you're waiting. But remember that God is working on you while you are waiting. Something actually happens while you're not actually seeing your physical healing or your deliverance or whatever you're believing God for. God uses this waiting time to change us. So although you have not had a straight away or an immediately or at the same hour, don't give up. Remember the 10 lepers? The Bible said as they went, they were cleansed. While they were in the presence of Jesus, it did not seem as though anything was happening. But the Bible said as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. And one grateful one returned and gave God glory and gave God thanks for all that had been done. Why not start now giving God glory? Father, we thank you for healing. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. Father, we thank you that you are a God that never says no to your promises and you promise to heal. Thank you, God, that you're working on my behalf. Right now, I give you the praise. I give you the glory. You are a true God. You are a holy God. You are a faithful God and you are doing it. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you that in your own time, I'm going to see the manifestation of that which you've promised. So in the Meanwhile, help me to be patient as I wait for my answer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you do not have a local assembly, 
feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy. The simplicity of the gospel.